Hi, this is Jason on Jason's Jungle and today I'm going to be planting me ochre. For some reason, my camera decided to go on to slow motion. So it's got no audio and I've had to speed it up. But, let's get on with the voiceover for this. Me ochre, as you can see here, was already sprouting and it's got some nice uh, chits coming from it. And a, a secondary thing that told me that the ochre was ready to plant was the fact that in the bed that I'm doing now, which is where I had the ochre last year, some volunteers had already started to sprout up. Now for the bed, all I've done really was uh, take out the weeds and cover it with some manure, uh, two barrel loads. Because although ochre is a root crop, it needs to put on a lot of leaf to get enough energy to make the, the tubers swell. So hopefully with the manure, that's going to give it a lot of nitrogen for the, the leaves to come. Now I'm planting them about 12 inches apart. Um, they'll create little mounds coming out from them and it'll take a while for those mounds to get joined together but initially there'll be lots of little mounds along here. So I put them out, you'll get the space and right for them about 12 inches apart and then I'll uh, double them into the ground. Um, what I'll do is I'll fast forward past this and uh, get to a, the uh, the bit where I'm putting them in. When I'm putting them in the ground, I basically just make a hole uh, a few inches deep and drop them in with the sprouts facing up. Although, to tell you the truth, there's sprouts facing every single way on them, so there's no definitive up. But basically I just go through all of them and put them in and cover them over. And that gives me um, about one foot plant in either direction. What you should notice here is I've got three different colours on I'm planting here. I've got the creams, I've got the oranges and I've got a red and white one. There are slight subtleties in the flavour of them. Um, and also the red and white changes colour to white and purple when I cooked it the other day. But in general they're all quite similar. So after I've got everything put out uh, and poked in, what I now do is I uh, give it a grass mulch. I get a lot of grass, so I like to use it. Uh, first of all I like to use it as a mulch. Because not only does it help retain moisture, it also keeps the weeds down. And as it breaks down, grass has a NPK of about 4.5 and 2. So it acts as a, a long-release general fertiliser as well. Um, that way, you know, I don't have to keep giving them top dressings and stuff. And the, you know, the grass serves loads of purpose. It feeds the worms, encourages the worms to dig. Um, because the soil underneath moisture gives it, you know, means the worms can come right up to the surface of the, of the uh, soil uh, rather than hanging around where it's moist underneath the, the first few inches. Uh, so I like to, I find that uh, since I've been using grass as a mulch heavily, the soil, especially in the new territories, has just improved drastically. So uh, the grass mulch goes down on almost everything. But anyway, that's the uh, ochre planted. I've just got to wait for it to come up. I will be doing another planting later on once the sweet corn's ready because I'm going to try and underplanting the sweet corn with the ochre to see if I get two crops. Um, the purpose for that is that the ochre would swell up and start making its tubers in September so that by the time um, the, sweet corn, the sweet corn would be ready and harvested, it could be cut back by the time the ochre is making its its root. Uh, so I hope that I'll be able to get two for one out of one bed. But that's an experiment that I'll be doing in con you know, as well as my normal ochre bed. Okay, so that's the ochre and I hope you liked it.